All right, good evening once again. This is Jay Barbo hosting the live interview with one of the candidates of Mexicana Universal 2021 pageant. And uh, uh, we all know that, or you know already, because I have posted the posters on uh, our Facebook page. And uh, she is all the way from New York or representing New York to the Mex Mexicana Universal 2021 pageant. Uh, before that, I would like you to know that we are also live on our YouTube channel. So once again, if you are new to our YouTube channel, don't forget to subscribe us and uh, click the notification bell so that you will be updated whenever we have new uploaded videos. And also, please, please follow us, our new Instagram account, at uh, Pageant Trend Official. So I don't know what happened uh, to our old account. It was disabled by Instagram. So please help us to grow again. Please follow us on our Instagram account at Pageant Trend Official. And of course, um, what else? Um, uh, tonight is a very special, uh, special because we have our special guest, of course, all the way from New York City, and uh, she is, uh, you know, competing for the Mexicana Universal 2021 pageant, and uh, she is very gorgeous and stunning. So, uh, without uh, much uh, further ado, let us. I'll welcome our special guest for tonight's live session, all the way from New York City, Pamela Lee Orbina. Hi, everyone. Mambuk, hi. Thank you so much for having me. Salamat po, Jay. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for dedicating some time to me in this live interview where you get will get a chance to get to know me a little bit more and, and about my advocacy and my road to the Mexicano Universal USA crown. All right. Welcome, Pamela, here at Pageant Trend. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> you look so gorgeous tonight, thank dear. You, thank you. Well, it's actually morning here, and I just want to quickly say, you know, being here in New York, you might hear some honking, you uh -huh. might hear some music, some music in the background, but, you know, the city never sleeps. It's very difficult to <laughs> have a, a quiet environment uh, here. All right. Thank you so much, dear. Anyway, uh, guys, if you have questions to Pamela, don't hesitate to comment down below. And later on, we'll be, we will be flashing it. And of course, if you want to get some shout out to Pamela, of course, don't forget or don't forget to indicate the place where you're at. And so we are uh, accepting also questions. But uh, disclaimer, we will not be entertaining some political questions. So you can ask anything about Pamela regarding with her pageant journey and as well as love life if you want. Is that okay to you, Pamela? <laughs> of course. And I just quickly wanted to say for the people that don't know, I've actually been to Philippines before. Did you know that, Jane? When I competed in Miss Global, um, the pageant was held in Philippines. So we spent about roughly two and a half weeks over there. And I just wanted to say Philippines to me is kind of like a home away from home. I mean, the experience that I had there is impacted my life and uh, you know it felt very um you guys were very hospitable to me very welcoming and i actually found out that the elderly population in the philippines speaks spanish correct yeah yeah so probably. i feel like you know in a way i am tied to philippines yes um i think it's a um, from some part in the philippines um just like pampanga so, uh yeah pangasinan all right so Pamela, how have you been doing um, during this pandemic if there is no uh, Mexicana Universal 2021 pageant? Well, you know, it's definitely been a long journey. I just want to say that right off the bat. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm a person that I consider myself that I have my goal very clear and kind of like my plan of action to get to that goal and also for afterwards if I were to be lucky enough to get the Mexican Universal USA crown. So, you know, it's just all about keeping a clear mind, a balanced uh, mind, body and soul connection and keep pushing, taking daily actions that will help me get closer to that goal. Wow, nice, nice one. Okay, um, Pamela, I'm just curious about the, the pageant, Mexican uh -huh. Universal. Can you tell us more about that? Because I have, um, you know, uh, if you're going to win the Mexicana Universal 2021 pageant, what country would uh, did or what pageant will be joining? 
in the future. So, okay, so Mexicano Universal USA is the extended franchise that Lupita Jones just established here in the U.S. It gives uh, all of our, all of us uh, Mexicans uh, an opportunity to, you know, kind of go back to our roots and be able to have an opportunity to represent Mexico in various pageants like the Miss Universe uh, organization, Reina Hispanoamerica, Miss International, Miss Charm. Um, you know, it gives you a platform to go on to move on and be able to represent who we are at an international level. So this is the first year that they're doing Mexicano Universal USA and the winner will be able to go on to Mexico. And I just feel like I'm so thankful for this opportunity because, you know, a lot of our grandparents and our fathers or even some of us, part of my generation of the Mexicano Universal USA class, you know, we we had to immigrate or they had to immigrate to the US in order to, you know, uh, create a better life look for more opportunities um so yeah it's i'm very very excited about that we're definitely breaking the glass ceiling how they say um i i'm a firm believer that you know as latinos and, and i'm pretty sure the filipino people can relate to this because i got to see it firsthand we're people that we don't recognize barriers right we keep fighting and shining past our uh, border so i'm very excited to be part of the first generation of mexicano universal usa Wow, it's really a good news for all of you guys. And uh, of course, um, uh, let's talk about your previous pageant that you have joined before. So you have mentioned a while ago that you've joined or you've, uh, you've joined the Miss Global. So can you tell us about um, your experience there and uh, what are uh, your learnings or what have you learned uh, during that time? Of course. So my main, uh, I just want to give back a quick little backstory of when or how I even decided to join the pageants. You know, growing up, I, I was born and raised in Texas, but I always made a very close connection with Mexico. You know, I, I grew up in the border town, so my life, you know, would be in between Mexico and the U.S., and my mother always instilled in me, you know, through perseverance and resilience, you will be able to achieve anything. So I really got to see firsthand what, you know, an immigrant would experience kind of uh, going beyond their borders, right? And it always uh, motivated me to not set limit for myself, but to uh, impulse me to keep going for more. So I, I knew from a very young age that if I were to be given an opportunity to uh, you know, to uh, take advantage of a platform, I knew that I wanted to represent my roots, you know, where my blood came from. So I, I knew one day I would have to enter a pageant or kind of uh, bring a, onto like a bigger platform what Mexico has to offer my, you know, my culture. And so when I saw the flyer for Miss Texas Global back in the day, you know, I, I still lived in Texas. Um, mm -hmm. I remember they kept asking me and asking me to do it. And at that time, keep in mind, I had just finished my first year of college. I was very, um, you know, not lost, but I guess, you know, I needed more of a sense of direction of what I wanted to do in my life. Right. I had just finished my per private performing arts academy. So I was a, I was I didn't have a sense of direction. And I remember it was just on this random day, I was having a conversation with a family member of mine and they suggested, um, I don't know, Jay, if you're close to God or if you watch church mm -hmm. or anything, but I remember my family member told me, hey, Pam, um, I feel like you need to start on the chapter Proverbs in the Bible. I feel like it might give some direction or something in there might impulse you to take the next step to see where you will, your life will head, go on to uh, do. And I said, okay, that was fine. So I started reading Proverbs. And see, I actually came across a verse that said, when God sends you an opportunity and you don't take it, it is also considered a sin. And this was just around the time when I started seeing the Miss Texas Global Flyer everywhere and everybody kept asking me for it. So I quickly called my mom and I was like, mom, do you think this is a sign from God? Is this a sign from the universe? Should I take it? She said, you know, if you never know, if you won't risk it, you will never know. So I remember I, I signed up. It was only a month before the deadline of the pageant. We won. Months later, we went on to the USA pageant. We won again. And then, you know, months after that, at the beginning of 2019, we were on our way to Philippines to represent mm -hmm. the USA. And, you know, even as soon as I landed in, in Philippines, I, I recorded myself and I have that video where I, I quickly stated that I wasn't only there representing the Americans, I wasn't only representing the USA, I was mm -hmm. also representing all the Latinos that reside in the US. Wow, that's a really nice. So you really have a, uh, you 
what we call this, you are a multitasker, dear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know, I, I knew from then I, I was going there to represent both cultures, right? Since I'm, mm-hmm. I guess you would say multicultural. Um, but yeah, it was, it was such a great learning experience. And I always say, you know, pad, beauty pageants aren't just for entertainment. I mean, do you, as a woman being in the pageant industry, you really get to evolve and grow and get to know yourself. And in a way, you start to align with your purpose and your mission in life. Exactly. So in other words, you should, uh, you should stay out of the box. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stay out of your comfort zone. So yes. don't limit yourself. No, right? you know, I, I love uh, about the topic about getting out of your comfort zone. Because mm. see, it's like in those uncomfortable moments where growth really happens. So You know, I'm kind of a person where I have a mentality of bring on the uncomfortable moments because I know I will come out in the end as a changed person. All right. So may I know what's the main reason why you decided to, you know, to join the Mexicana Universal to uh, New York? New York. So I was actually already living in New York. I am actually Mm -hmm. currently studying in New York Film Academy. I'm also a marketing director and a professional model. And I, you know, this, this uh, Mexicana Universal U- in New York uh, brought, came to me at such a, I guess at the right moment. I'm a firm believer that God's timing is everything. Uh, this was a month before the pandemic, Jay. And I remember mm-hmm. I was at a dinner and I, you know, I was just very into like the modeling industry at that time. And again, I had kind of gone back to I needed more of a sense of direction I, I kind of had lost my way a bit I was just you know so distracted by the world today right so I remember at this dinner uh, that I had gotten invited to Madison Barrios was there the first runner mm-hmm. of this universe and um, Kenny and Marie who are now part of my my Mexican Universal uh, New York team they were there and I remember I was just sitting at that dinner and I, so many thoughts were just clouding my mind, negative thoughts, uh, you mm-hmm. know, it's, it's kind of like I was full of self-doubt at that moment. And I remember Kenny from that table, who's my life coach, he got up and he tapped me on the shoulder and he said, hi, you know, uh, can I speak with you for a second? And Jay, at that time, I was like, oh gosh, mm-hmm. I just met these people. I think I did <laughs> or said something wrong. I'm about to get in trouble. And as he, you know, as we walked up to the corner of the room, he started telling me how he, you know, knew about me. He knew about my pageant experience and that he had heard that I wanted to, I wanted to continue um, in the pageant industry. But now as Mexicano Universal, you, uh, you know, well, I actually wanted to go straight to Mexico. I, you know, the, the rumors about Mexicano Universal USA at that moment were, were starting to appear, but I didn't know if it was something concrete. And so he said that, I could count on him for whatever I needed. And at that very moment, you know, I had just been praying actually like seconds before he even tapped me on the shoulder. So to me, it was kind of like, it was an angel and a sign sent from God. And a month later, the pandemic happens. So then my mindset goes back to Pam, uh, what are you going to do? We're now at zero again. You know, the whole world is put on pause. It's on it's still. Um, and then, so I actually, I'm a person that I, I want to prepare for what's to come, right? So during the whole pandemic, I didn't hear anything from anybody anymore. I thought I wasn't going to be presented with this opportunity, but I knew that if I wanted to align myself with my future uh, purpose, I needed to start da- taking daily actions to kind of heal myself from within as well as from without, right? Kind of uh, go in with a, and focus on having a strong mentality because the mind is a muscle that we have to work on. So the whole pandemic, I got so into the Reiki meditation and mm-hmm. studying about the conscious mind and uh, quantum mechanics. And I mean, I just became so obsessed with it that I started implementing daily habits to start helping me. Eight months later, I receive a call. Pam, uh, we now have this offer, Mexicano Universal New York. Would you like to take it? And to me, I was like, wow, the whole growth and evolution that I had during the pandemic of working for myself led me for that opportunity that presented it itself at the right moment. So, yeah, that's how I am here today. Wow. Well, I think it's a, it's a calling from God. It is a calling. Time. 
Yes. Well, anyway, do you believe in destiny? Of course, of course. I mean, if you haven't gotten the point by now, I'm all about signs from the universe and God and destiny. Um, but I, I do believe that in order, you know, you can't just rely on destiny. You also have to start taking daily actions that will help you get there. Because, you know, oftentimes we, we hear people say, I want this or I wish for that. Mm -hmm. And my question yeah. is, but what are you doing to get you closer to that goal? We can't just wish for something. We have to work for it. Exactly. You're, you're definitely right. You need to work on it uh, for you to be able to achieve mm -hmm. your wish. Yes. Right? So you don't need to believe in the miracle. No. Right? <laughs> of course. You, you have to work on it. Uh, it's right. a little so, bit of both, you know, because it's also, mm -hmm. uh, I love, uh, you know, affirmations and kind of keeping like a positive mindset because I'm a firm believer that if you think positive things, you will attract positivity. And if you start filling your mind with self-doubt and negative uh, thoughts, you know, that's kind of what you're going to start to experience around you. The mind is a very powerful uh, instrument that we have in today's society. All right. What do you think is your qualities that uh, you possess of as a being a uh, Mexicana universal? So I believe, you know, all of my life experiences have led me to this moment. I feel like they've overall just pretty much prepared me for this, uh, for this job that I'm trying to apply for. But I would consider myself as a woman that I, I feel like, you know, being an entrepreneur, being in the business industry, and a, as well as an international model, I have developed a well sense of discipline, determination, and dedication. And I know what I'm signing up for. It's a grand responsibility to represent not only, you know, the Latinos residing in the U.S., but also to be able to represent Mexico at an international level. Nice one. All right. So looking back on your Instagram, uh, let's see. <laughs> Uh huh. Oh, I forgot it. <laughs> Hold on, Pamela. So, I have seen that you are a speaker and a media personality. So, um, do you think this is your advantage of you know of getting the crown? I feel as if my advantage would be my essence. You know, through my essence, I feel I'm a person that I love inspiring and helping other people. And I feel like those are the qualities that will kind of define me as like my superpower. And it will be my advantage. Wow. Nice one. Nice one, dear. All right. And I have a question for you here. Mm -hmm. So this one. What is the biggest uh, change you would like uh, to see young women in the next generation? So, you know, me being myself at a very young age, I was exposed to uh, entrepreneur women and women breaking the barriers. So that would kind of be my message to never be defined or let anyone apply a label on you because the possibilities are endless. You know, me being in such an industry, in the marketing industry, where, you know, I've had to do presentations in a room full of well, highly intelligent and educated men, and then me going in there as a woman, as a 23 year old, and as overall as a Latina, that just goes to show me that we're capable of doing anything that we plan to in this world. So oh, I actually uh, had the opportunity to empowerment association event with Margarita Zavala, who was the mm -hmm. former first, uh, first lady in Mexico. And she went on about to talk about, you know, her being in the politics because of her husband and her now getting involved with, with uh, politics. She would often be kind of placed in a box, right? They have this mentality that, oh, you're supposed to be home or you're supposed to be just there. You can't, you know, come into this environment. But, you know, through the years, through the decades, we've definitely seen more and more women expand into those uh, environments. All right. So, uh, my next question for you is: I don't think of um, if this is bad or because um, we all know that um, from um, polit politics to pageantry, um, if we both um, combine together, it might, it might have a bad effect on us. So, um, I'm just curious about this one: if you are also experiencing um, that in your country that all the beauty queens are, you know, expressing their thoughts about the government or anything. Are they this, uh, do they have the same 
here in the Philippines because some of our beauty queens, uh, when they speak up mm -hmm. uh, to their self uh, with regards to the government, so it might have a, or they have a bad effect or they might have more bashers uh, when it comes yeah. to uh, the competition itself. Do they uh, also, or do you experience in your country also the same? Here in the Philippines. Yes, I mean, it's, this is like a worldwide problem that I've actually been seeing get worse and worse through the years that people have lost the respect of uh, respecting somebody's uh, different opinion, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel like yes. we have to kind of go back uh, into that and kind of start to connect and realize that we're all humans. We all have feelings. And just because mm -hmm. you have a different point of view or a different opinion from me, I shouldn't uh, be you know I shouldn't uh, make you or belittle you in a sense of way mm -hmm. you know we all have to respect each other we all have to support each other and then you know through all the situations that are happening in today's world I'm a firm believer that in unity there's strength and I will always continue to say that you know united we stand divided we fall so instead of attacking somebody just because they have a different opinion we should actually mm -hmm. be able to either respect them or just hear them out so we can kind of maybe bounce off ideas exactly wow very nice answer dear oh, thank you. <laughs> all right I'm, I'm really impressed with all of your answers dear and i think that you are very much prepared for this mexicana universal fashion oh thank you thank you <laughs> all right my next question for you dear pamela so what are the challenges that you have you have encountered of uh, joining the pageant so I remember the first few conversations or even comments that I started coming across from was, well, why are you a USA? Why are you in USA? Or you weren't born in Mexico. And see, to me, it's I know I wasn't born there, but nobody or nothing can change the fact that, you know, that blood is the one that runs through my veins. And, you know, that is my culture. That is who I identify with. And this is actually a hashtag that I always utilize is ser mexicana se lleva en la sangre. You know, being Mexican, it's in my blood. Nobody will ever change that. Just because a paper says something different, that can change the blood that runs through my veins. All right. So how many contestants do, do you have for, for the Mexicana Universal? Uh, the, USA the USA one, uh, yeah, yes. I believe there's only about 12 or 13. I'm 13. getting a sense of feeling because since it's the first year, a lot of people are kind of just trying to see how this will evolve uh, during this, you know, these upcoming months. And uh, hopefully for next year, you know, if I were to be crowned the, the new winner, I would definitely start, uh, you know, sharing my experience through the rain and as well as encouraging the rest of the girls out there to, to get involved, to not limit themselves. All right. So another question for you. I'm just curious about this passion because it's a new uh, to my um, point of view. So yeah. Mexican Universal, are, are the contestants uh, or candidates of this pageant um, really, um, uh, I think, I don't know how to speak Spanish or came from uh, Latin, something like that? Yes. Or so what are the qualifications? Actually, uh -huh. From the girls that, that I've actually gotten a chance to really look into, um, they're, most of them were born in Mexico. And then they, uh, they immigrated through the years here in the U.S. So they should, they, they should be uh, born in Mexico before they compete for the Mexican Universal. Is that right? So some of them were, and then there's also the girls that were like me, that I come from immigrant parents and I have my double nationality. So that gives me the access to compete. All right. So no a pure American to compete for this uh, competition or for this pageant or open No, you, for you all. have to either have Mexican parents or have been born in Mexico, from my understanding. All right. So that's a great idea. All right. So... Another question for you. So have you met all the, the candidates of Mexican Universal? No, no. You know, I mean, since COVID is still a big thing, uh, we haven't even been able to kind of like meet each other in person. Um, you know, just a few months ago, New York barely opened up. So but I'm very, very excited to get to know them because I feel like we all have similar stories, maybe even a similar mission, right? And it's just a beautiful thing because I've always said, and you know, through my experience in the pageant industry before, you always end up with lifelong friendships. So I'm very excited to meet these young women. 
All right. Thank you so much. So before we move on to my next question, let's have a reading of comments and questions from our viewers. Okay. Let's have our first uh, viewer from the Philippines, Mariel Santillan. <laughs> Best of luck, Pamela. Thank you so much. Thank you. Salamat po. Thank you so much, Mariel, for tuning in. And don't forget to share our live session so that we can have more viewers to come, guys. And also, one of your social media manager from the Philippines is also watching right now, Linnell uh -huh. Valenciano. Hi, Pamela Hi, and Jay. Hi, man. Thank you so much for all of your work. I, I adore her. She's the best. Exactly. And she is the ever or the very supportive social manager. Yes, yes, yes. Proven and tested, Linnell Valenciano. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Linnell, of course, for, uh, you know, inviting us uh, to become, you know, or to, uh, to... Uh, Getting us connected. Be our, yes, <laughs> uh, to be our, to be uh, Pamela as one of our guests here in Pageant Trend. Thank you so much, Mars. And also... Let's have this one. Another viewer from Francesca Sandra Avenido Urbina. What's this? Um, Yotz Lisle Urbina Samatra Lori Lee Peregrino Urbina. I think that's a shout out. Oh, right? okay. Do you want me to read it? I, yeah, I can, sure. I can't see. Oh, ah, okay. Either. You can see that. <laughs> okay. Do, I, think I can it, try. I can try to read it. It's your family, I guess. No, you have the same no, but you know what? I'll consider them family since we have the same last name. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyway, thank you for thank you so much for tuning in, and don't forget to share our live session. But and of course, please like our page so that we can have you can uh, have uh, you know um, new source of pageant news, which is the pageant trend. All right. Next, uh, we have. Okay, from Mariel Santillan. I'd like to ask Pamela, how many pageants uh, did you join before? So actually, my mom says that I she entered me in my first pageant when I was only six months old. And I won that one, of course. I mean, I don't remember any of that, right? <laughs> But then uh, through the years, I, you know, I didn't enter until Miss Texas Global. And then I was lucky enough to win that one, won the USA, and then went off to place fourth runner-up in Miss Global. All right. Thank you so much, dear. And uh, let's have this uh, oh, comment from Maria Santillan. Thanks. And we have from Nico Chose Ganda. Do you know what's the meaning of that? No, please teach me. Ganda means beauty. Oh, or thank you so much. Salamat po. So actually, fun fact, when I was in Philippines, um, we our makeup artists were part of the Lisa Kebrin Keb uh -huh. Academy. I hope I'm not saying that uh, wrong. But um, I remember I came, became really close with Lisa, the main owner, with Josh and another makeup artist, Ulysses, which uh, rest in peace, unfortunately, he passed away. But I remember whenever we would get our makeup done, I have videos in my phone even up to this day where I would be, where I would set the phone up and I would tell them, hey, please teach me Filipinos because one of my <laughs> missions there was try to kind of interact with each and everybody that, that I met. One of the main things that, that I always say is, you know, I want to become rich in life, but not money wise. You know, I want to be uh -huh. rich with experiences and communication and I want to hear their stories. And yeah, it's a wonderful way to communicate with each other. Exactly. All right. Next. Uh, oh, Nico Shosa wants uh, to, get, to get shout out. Hi, Nico. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you so much, Nico. And please share our live. And also another comment from Maria Santillan. So it's a Tagalog. So I'm going to translate it for you. Okay. Um, I'll be reading first the Tagalog version. Pang Miss Universe ang ganda ni Pamela. So it means uh, you, have a Miss, uh, you have a universal beauty. Oh, thank Something. you so much. Salamat po. Jay, you have to teach me more <laughs> Filipino words. So that way, next time I come on here, I can interact a little bit better. Sure. Uh, and also another uh, meaning of that is uh, your beauty is just like 
um, a messy universe. Oh, thank really you so the much. Universe. Thank you, thank you. That's such a huge compliment. Thank you so much. All right. So another, um, if you want another um, Tagalog, I would like to share to you is Kumusta. Kumustas. Yes. Kumusta means. Ah, kumusta without s. <laughs> yes. Ah, uh, kumusta means how are you? No, kumustas with the s. Ah, uh, no, there's no s. It's kumusta only. Oh really? Uh, yeah. No, no s without s. Oh, kumusta. okay, okay, okay. I know guapo is the same. Is the same, right? Uh, yeah, it guapo means. Good to hear. Ah, uh, guap, guapito. Guapito, uh, guapito, yes, yes. I, I think I have in, uh, one of my videos. Spain. <laughs> yeah, guapito in Spain, guapo in Tagalog, and uh, in English, handsome. Handsome. Yeah. All right. So let's have this another comment from our viewer from Yang La Vitoria. So beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> FYI, Yang La Vitoria is one of the candidates of Miss International Queen Philippines 2021. Wow. When is that pageant? When is it coming up? Uh, by next year, March 6, 2022. Wow. Well, you know what? Good luck. I know you know the pressure of trying to go after that crown. We're on the same boat, but I send the best of energy and vibes to you. All right. Thank you so much. And the winner for the Miss International Queen Philippines will compete to the Miss International Queen to be held in Thailand. Wow, Thailand. Yeah. I just so had a Thailand interview about two or three days ago. Wow. And also this pageant is, you know, a trans women, transgender women, prestigious transgender women pageant. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Do you know if I can view it maybe through YouTube, Facebook? Yes, you can search it. Okay, right. perfect. I'll be watching. All right. So next uh, viewer from Aljon Sikusana. Hello, Miss Pamela. Hi. Sending love out. Hi, Aljon. And FYI again, Aljon Sikusana is uh, one of the hair stylists here wow. in the Philippines. Oh, I hope to meet you whenever I do go back to Philippines. All right, thank you so much, guys, so for your comments and uh, you know. Yes, such out. a great audience. I love it. It's such a positive environment. Yes. So please don't forget to comment down below your questions. So keep on sending your comments and questions to Pamela. All right, let's move on to my next question, Pamela. Mm -hmm. So, if given a chance to win the Me Mexicana Universal 2021 pageant, what would be the first thing you will do? So I actually have something prepared for the live and it will tie in with the first thing that I would do for the pageant. Mm -hmm. um, two, three years ago, I had the opportunity to go to Oaxaca and mm -hmm. I, you know, I was doing some uh, press tour, charity work there. I was still part of the Royal Court from the Miss Globe organization. And, you know, visiting Oaxaca, I mean, that's in Mexico. That's my culture. That's my roots. I was the only one that spoke Spanish out of the whole royal court. So I was the one doing mainly all the interactions with uh, one of the schools that we got to visit. The, keep in mind, this school was on top of the mountain. The classrooms didn't have no AC. The walls were made from uh, this uh, material that, you know, in the summers, it would get very hot. Winters get very cold. And even the floors were dirt, right? So I was, I was speaking with the young girls there, you know, I started to kind of dive into their mindset and I started to hear a lot of their stories say that, you know, these girls are already being taught that, you know, through education, they have to stop it at a certain level in order, to, in order for them to start working and help the family out. So I felt that my mission there at that very moment was to instill that passion for them to keep going in life, to kind of wake up that fire from within, right? To also give them the message that the possibilities are endless. It doesn't matter um, in the environment that you're in or where you come from. And I remember before I left, one of the girls drew me this drawing. And, wow. um, you know, around that time, I, I knew I was, I was so present with my culture, right? And I knew I was representing, you know, not just the Mexicans, but also the Latinos that were said in the U.S., as I mentioned before. But it was this very one sentence that changed my mind and just 
threw out all the doubtness that I had for the future and made it very clear that I was a mission for me to represent yeah. Mexico and all that we had to contribute to the world at an international level one day. And it says, you know, she, she writes a cute note here in the back. I don't know if you could see it. And yes, um, see it. she's just, you know, describing me, how, how it was to meet me. And then in the end, she finishes off with Mexicana de Corazón. And I was wow. like, wow, how is it that a young girl in Oaxaca is already identifying with myself, identifying with me, and already sees that purpose in me before I even started to actually truly believe it. So the first thing that I would do is go back to that school, place that sash, place that crown on her and tell her, I am not here just representing myself. I'm here representing you, every other person with the dream, no matter, uh, and I want you to feel that no matter where you come from, no matter your race, your color, your culture, the possibilities are endless. Nice, dear. All right. Um, uh as a beauty queen or as a candidate, uh, well, of course you are. You are already, you are already considered as a beauty queen. So uh, we all know that beauty queens has uh, its own story or inspiring story. So um, can we have uh, the inspiring story of Pamela? Of course. So I feel my inspiring story would be through all the experiences that I've uh, had the opportunity to share with you, but. I mean, it all just comes down to one thing. Um, we have to kind of connect to ourselves, connect to our inner beauty, and start to be present in the moment, and our, start to align ourselves with the purpose. Um, I know I'm a person that I'm very driven, I'm very perseverant, and I'm very resilient. And, you know, those are the qualities that definitely benefit me in today's world to keep on pushing towards uh, my dreams, despite of the obstacles that are presented to me. I've actually even trained my mind to see obstacles as more of like challenges that will help me evolve and get me ready for the future opportunities. Nice. Nice one, dear. <laughs> okay. All right. Another question for you. So is it really important to speak in English um, when you are uh, joining the pageant or especially um, an international pageant? What's, so, take, what's your stake on that? Huh. So I, I have a, a different point of view on this. So I feel you should do whatever you are comfortable with, right? Because you have to take care of you. You have to know yourself and what you are willing to do. But as far as for me, I'm that person that I like to kind of go the extra mile because I know that you know, if I'm trying to apply for an international job, it's a grand responsibility. I want to be able to communicate with people. So if it were to me, I would learn that language. But again, you know, to each their own. So I would just say, do whatever is the most comfortable with you. Exactly. And uh, well, it, I think it's, it depends about the situation, right? Yes. So let us say, if you are um, competing for an international pageant, which is... um somewhere in, uh, like for example, in uh, Latin America. So you should speak, um, you should know how to speak um, on their language, or mix, uh, Spanish, something mm -hmm. like that, so that you may, you, um, they might be able to understand. But of course, I guess some of the Spanish um, countries also understand uh, English, right? So I yes. think it's okay for them. Uh -huh. And see, even to me, I applied this when I went to Philippines. I had kind of started doing some research on like the basic communication because I knew that as soon as I got to Philippines, I wanted to, again, interact with the people there. And I'll say every day as I sat on that makeup chair, I would tell Ulysses and Josh, I'd be like, please teach me more words because I want to <laughs> go out there. And, you know, I think you've probably get the hint by now. I love talking. <laughs> I love talking to people, getting to hear people's stories. So yeah, I, I definitely have to refresh my Filipino. Okay, this one. This my next question for you is a very common. Uh, it's a pageant question. Why do you deserve to become the first ever Mex Mexicana Universal winner? So I consider myself as a woman who has her purpose very clear in her plan of action for after winning that crown. I consider myself to also have certain qualities that would consider me as a leader. And I would say that I am dedicated, disciplined, and overall determined to also bring in to show the world what Mexico has to contribute to the society. Nice. Perfect. Um, they say, um, we say it in Tagalog, kulang na lang corona. Kuna, kuna na lang corona? 
Kulang. Kulang. Kulang na lang, corona. Kulang na lang, corona. <laughs> it's really hard to translate. So, um, based on my own uh, translation, um, it, it says that um, crown the crown is missing in your head, something like that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next uh, question for you, dear. Oh, Jay, just to inform you and everybody watching here, I actually took parts for the pageant on November 30th, and the finale mm-hmm. will be December 3rd. So, yes, everybody, please stay tuned for that. I feel like we're going to have a great time over there. It's actually going to be held in Cancun. Do you know where Cancun is? Have you seen uh, the, the, the pictures of the beaches that we have there? Not yet. Uh, I'm going to see it later. <laughs> I'm, I'm just um, familiar on that, Cancun. Mm-hmm. All right. So I'll see it later. Okay, dear. So next question for you. Um, uh, this one. This is also a pageant question. Okay. Why do you think that people have neg- negative image of pageantry? Uh, let, let us say when it comes to um, uh, a beauty pageant for a female. Mm-hmm. So I feel like, you know, back in the day, the beauty pageants used to really emphasize and focus on more of the physical beauty, right? But through the years, we've seen such an evolution uh, happening in the pageant industry. Now, uh, beauty pageants are more important than ever, as in to my personal opinion, because it really gives us a platform to be a voice for the voiceless, to express ourselves and our opinions, and also our our uh, projects that we work on, as well as it also impulses us to create a better future, not only for our personal life, but as well as for our professional life. So I, to me, they're very important. And I feel like Every woman out there should at least give it a try sometime because the most growth and evolution that I've had in my life is because of the pageant, the experience that I've had from the pageants. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, let's have um, from our viewer, YouTube channel, Pageant Trend, from Marie Lianos, the queen of New York and Hi, Mexico. that's my director. Hi, Marie. Love you. <laughs> that's wow. my director. Thank you so much for for your support and as well as for watching her pageant trend. Hey, Jake, I quickly wanted to mention, remember how we were talking about a woman and being entrepreneurs and mm-hmm. role models and successful women going past uh, the barriers and breaking the glass ceiling? Mm-hmm. Keep in mind, my director is the owner of uh, and founder of West New York Fashion Week. She's the CEO of Luxie Buddy Magazine. And she's an incredible entrepreneur woman. That's also a great example for me because, you know, as I'm trying to go for an international crown, you know, it's amazing to have powerful women surrounding me. Wow. Thank you so much. I'm a bit surprised of that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'm a bit surprised and and as well as intimidate because, you know, (laughs) of that title. All right. Thank you so much, um, Marie Lianas, for watching. Okay. Let's have this another question for you. Okay. So we all know that um, you're not a rookie in this pageantry, right? And you have experienced a lot of, of challenges in mm-hmm. the pageantry world. So some of uh, the beauty queens are, of course, uh, most of the beauty queens, um, not a winner or um, a winner, um, have exp- uh, are experiencing some bullying or bashing on mm-hmm. social media. So... My question for you is, have you experienced on that, that kind of uh, bullying or bashing? Of course. I mean, you know, being kind of now as like a public figure on the social media platforms, you know, you, you tend to experience all types of comments from constructive criticism to the negative ones and as well as the, as well as the positive ones, right? And I feel like now more than ever, we're in the ear of technology and we should be able to take advantage of this powerful tool that we have. And instead of hating on somebody and throwing out so much negativity i mean in today's world it's such a critical time right we should be able to impulse one another and more than ever unite because in unity there's strength Mm, all right you're right dear and you should always um accept uh, their comments and uh, make it uh uh, make uh, their negative comments into positive comments right Mm -hmm, of course so next question for you. Um, uh, let's talk about your preparation for this um, 
Mexicana Universal. So how was it? Uh, uh, do you have, uh, do you train or who's behind your journey? So I have a whole well-rounded team of life coaches of, uh, you know, we do everything from runway to etiquette, life coaching, Q&A, um, a little bit of everything, right? As well as like always kind of uh, envisioning and polishing like the image that you want to perceive, right? So even whenever this was an important topic, as soon as I got reunited or united with the Mexican Universal New York team was, you know, you have to be your most authentic self. And our mission was to demonstrate who I was, to demonstrate my what I want to transmit and communicate to the people. And I definitely knew that I wanted people to feel and to see my essence being here on this platform. Okay. If you're going to rate yourself into a per percentage um, from 1% to 100%, um, what percent are you in right now when it comes to um, readiness and preparedness for this match? From 1% to 100%? Mm -hmm. I would say about a 90% because I, I, I have this mentality where I'm always proud, but I'm never satisfied because I feel like there's always room for growth. There's always room for improvement. So I would like to leave that last percent for me to keep on going and improving on myself. All right. So if you are going to, um, if you are going to create um, a formula of success, what's your formula? A formula of success. Oh, gosh, I would say a strong mind because the mind is very powerful. And again, you know, going into this topic of quantum mechanics and the body, the mind connection, that is the most powerful tool that a human being can have. So I would say a strong mind and a clear uh, view of your purpose on what you want to do. Those two, no, yeah. that's the perfect combination to being successful in whatever environment uh, it is. Nice one, dear. Actually, I'm, I'm just also, I also thinking about uh, if you have the right decision and right action, you should yes. succeed. And that, and your answer is very unique and very relatable, right? Yes. So, great job, dear. So Thank you. Strong mind and as well as, uh, once again, come again. <laughs> I forgot it. <laughs> Strong minded Strong and minded. to have your purpose very clear. Yes, a, uh, a clear purpose. Yes, a clear purpose. All right. Well, congratulations in advance, dear. You Thank really you. did a great job when it comes to the Q&A. Thank anyway, you. Anyway, so another question for you. Okay. So I, I forgot to ask you about your platform that, you had choose. Can you uh, discuss or can you share with us? Of course. So my platform was actually inspired by an event that I had when I was a young girl. My mother used to actually have us collect our toys and use gently clothing. And we used to cross over to Mexico and we used to deliver these, right? So then as through on the years went on and as I started getting older, I became a part of Girl Scouts and I started collaborating with so many different organizations. Uh, Girls Incorporated for being one of them, Dress for Success. I mean, it was just years of experience. So then it wasn't until one day that I felt that it was right in my gut and it was my intuition guiding me and telling me, Pam, you have to create your own organization so that way, you know, you can start being a voice for the community. And I knew that I wanted to be an impact as well. So I, I actually created I Choose Love Campaign that focuses on love and respect despite of our culture differences. Because I believe now more than ever in today's climate, that is a very important message that we have to get out there. I, I, thank you so much, dear. Okay, what's your guilty pleasure? A guilty pleasure? Oh my gosh. Okay, so be Latina, I would say it would be our food. That is a guilty pleasure. <laughs> okay, so if there is a, um, uh, one rule or if, or if there is no rule in your life, what will you do? If there is no rule? Mm -hmm. Rule oh, in your life. It would be back to, uh, you know, to the eating and the food and everything because I feel like the Latinos... We have such a, an amazing way of expressing like our passion through our food, right? And so mm -hmm. one of the things that I've been sharing with people here on the lives is, I don't know if you've ever noticed, but mm -hmm. we cook with uh, the colors of our flag. We always have something green, which is like the chile, yes. right? 
and then yeah. white, the onion, and red, uh -huh. which would be the tomato or a different type of chile. Yeah. So to me, it's kind of like it's a it's a connection of our culture and kind of like it's a good way for us to express ourselves in the kitchen. Wow, what's your favorite food? Uh, if I could eat something every single day, it would be tamales. Have you ever had tamales? Not yet. <laughs> tamales. Oh my gosh, okay. If you ever oh, yeah. just come, you're more than welcome to come to my house. Trust me, you'll probably gain about 10 pounds because there's so much food. But it would be tamales. Uh, they're delicious. Wow. Um, I think it's very delicious. Okay, so so since you have um, uh, visited Philippines, what's your favorite food here in the Philippines? So there was this actual, it was a fish that was breaded. Uh -huh. And I uh -huh. believe it also had, it, so it was a breaded fish and it had mm -hmm. some salmon in there with some cream cheese filling. And we mm -hmm. actually had it whenever we visited, uh, I believe it was the palace. There's a palace mm -hmm. that we shot it. The Versailles Palace, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Versailles. Yes, we had our swimsuit competition there and we had that for lunch. Oh my gosh, Jay, I just remember eating that and then realizing I'm still in a bikini. I'm going to walk out with a bloated tummy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a lot of food here in the Philippines, especially um, we love rice. Yes. So that's why... So that's why we uh we we are bigger than vigor. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, you know, and then, then another thing that I actually ate and it was introduced to me by Linel. So hi, Linel, if you're watching, was uh, we went to this market and it's in a uh, purple bag and it's piaya. Mm -hmm. Yes, piaya. Yes, piaya. Oh my gosh, Jay, I brought back two bags that did not last a day. I went through them like nothing because it's so good. Yeah, I also ate that. Really? It's very delicious. Yes. Yes. It's, um, I think it's from uh, Cebu. Cebu. It came yes. from Cebu. Yes. Yeah, so Something definitely, like, um, if I go back to Philippines, I, I will buy a lot of piaya. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, dear. And also, uh, my uh, let's have this. My last question for you. Uh, before we move on to the faster questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, next. Uh, with everything that you have uh, going on, how how will you ha how will you handle the responsibility of the crown if you are selected or you're gonna win the crown? So I feel like not only my life experiences, but as well as my upbringing and, upbringing and my parents really instilled in me to be organized, right? You know, I'm a person that I always have a lot going on, but I, it's, I think it's because purpose feels pa passion. And if you have a right mindset, a clear view of what you want to do and your plan of action, as well as sprinkling some organization in there, I believe more than ever, you'll be able to accomplish whatever it is that you desire. All right. Last question. Who is uh, uh, the Miss Universe uh, beauty queen winners you look up to the most? So I don't have a specific favorite one, but the qualities that I get from each of the winners would be that mm -hmm. I get so inspired by an actual uh, activity fulfilled reign, right? Because that motivates me to kind of even want to do it more. We know whenever you see a queen being active, uh, voicing uh, her her expression, her opinion, and also, you know, shining light on different topics and organizations in today's world. Uh, I believe now more than ever, that is the main reason of why, you know, the beauty queens are held to such a high standard because they do leave an impact in the society. Okay, thank you so much, dear, for that wonderful answer. So let's move on now to the faster questions, which is okay. getting to know more about Pamela <laughs> Lee or Bina. So, all right, so I have prepared... Uh, some few questions for you mm -hmm. and it comes from uh, a slideshow presentation so i hope okay. you like it okay. all right so i'll be sharing it now here in uh, the room there you have it and uh, this one so you will look at the screen and i'll be reading it for you here okay first question what is the most unusual fear you have unusual fear hmm i would say maybe allowing fear 
to control me because you know through the years i've actually you know, developed the mindset that fear is only an illusion and i can't allow that to stop me because it's only something that you tend to feel in that very moment for a few seconds all right next question what do you wish people would <laughs> stop asking you um maybe if i am capable enough to represent in mexico at an international level because again and i am going to throw in my hashtag here ser mexicana se lleva la sangre nothing will, will remove or take away the blood that runs through my veins all right thank you so much next up what's the biggest lesson life has taught you i would say now that everything that happens to you is for a reason and maybe it might not make sense now and i don't know if you jay or the people viewing here mm -hmm. uh can relate to this but you know whenever we tend to come across an obstacle or something unusual happen to us it's a redirection for what's to come it's for you to learn uh from that lesson and apply mm -hmm. it to your future self all right next what pictures or paintings you have had a big impact on you So there's an actual very special painting that was gifted to be to me by my grandmother before she passed away a few years ago. And it's a guardian angel with two kids and they're playing alongside a river. And, you know, I have a brother who was also very close with my grandmother because my two oldest brothers, um, you know, they were already married and had their own family. So in the house, it would just be me, my brother and my grandmother. And so that image, I remember she told me that no matter what happens, her soul would be here always guiding me through life and she would always be here uh, protecting me. So it's a very special picture that I have in my room, actually. Oh, so, so touching. Okay, next. Uh, what movie or book character are you most similar to? I would say Wonder Woman. And I know a lot of people throw out Wonder Woman. But honestly, since I was a little girl, you know, I grew up with three older brothers. So I used to fight a lot and kind of think of myself as like a strong girl since back in the day. And I've just grown up with that mindset. Like Wonder Woman is such an empowering, right, woman that she's not afraid of anything. She just goes out there and she does an amazing job of like woman empowerment. So I would definitely relate to her. All right, next. What's the best thing about being a beauty queen? I would say maybe having not only a whole community, but a whole country, a whole universe, being able to relate to you and your story. Kind of also having people look up to you uh, and also being a voice for the voiceless. I believe now more than ever, that is, uh, that is very vital in today's climate. Nice one, dear. Okay, how quickly do you jump to conclusions about people? I don't. Oh, I, one thing that I do have about me, and maybe it's because I'm so in tune with myself and my energy and my vibration is I, I perceive energies for, uh, fairly quickly. So once I meet somebody, I can kind of pick up on your aura and your energy. But no, you know, I always say never judge a book by its cover. I love getting to know people, diving into your mindset and your thoughts about certain things. So we shouldn't jump into conclusions right off the bat. Exactly. Thank you so much. And let's have this. If you could replace handshake as a greeting, what interesting new greeting would you replace it with? Um, I would say maybe the pinky. I don't know if you've seen that when people touch pinkies. Um, mm -hmm. I actually just saw this in a recent study that it reduces the passage of germs by 93%. So I know a lot of people out there, especially after the pandemic, they're so conscious about the germs and, you know, they don't even want to touch you now. But, you know, we, we can't lose that, right? We can't lose that interaction with one another. So if we're not going to shake hands, at least let's just pinky with each other. Exactly. Wow, that's a, a very cute pinky. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. And let's have this uh, another question. What fact are you really surprised that more people don't know you? So I feel like people don't know that I'm actually, uh, so I have three. Um, mm -hmm. One would be that I love boxing. My grandfather was actually a former boxer in Mexico, and he actually had the opportunity to box with a well-known boxer who they used to call El Raton. And then the second one would be that I come from 
a warrior bloodline. Um, I have part of my family in Parras, Coahuila, and my great 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 grandfather um, was Jose Maria Pavon Morelos. So he actually fought for the independence of Mexico. So I feel like, you know, I feel kind of strong coming from a warrior bloodline and somebody very important in the history of Mexico. And the third one would be, I love sports and anything cars because people often forget that I grew up in a household with three older brothers. So there wasn't a lot of playing with Barbies for me. It was a lot of playing with cars and watching sports. Nice. Okay, next. Who is the most humble person you know? I would have to say my mother. She's actually over there sitting down. <laughs> Because, um, you know, she, she came from a very humbling uh, upbringing. And, you know, through the years, she's always uh, told me the importance of just staying grounded uh, no matter what it is. You know, if you, oft, if you get to achieve it, what you want in life, you know, you always have to remain humble and grounded overall. Exactly. Be humble always to your mother. Yes. All right. Okay, next. Uh, love life or crap? Well, CJ, I'm not in love. So as to me, my love would be the crown and my purpose for the crown. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You should focus on that crown yes. <laughs> first. Uh, anyway, uh, true love waits if you have. Of course. I mean, right. you can also have a balance. And we've been seeing this with Andrea Mesa, right? With I, Which yes. I love the example that she's setting out to everybody that you know a woman is capable to having a balanced life no matter it is what you decide to do um you know she has her her boyfriend who i love them as a couple and then she's also our current miss universe so i love that example that she's giving out but as far as for me no love life just a crown mm, all right good <laughs> okay next question what app on your phone do you wish you used more So I have an app that actually um, brings up Bible verses and I used to uh, see it first thing in the morning and it would kind of like get me a, a Bible verse for the day, right? But as of lately, you know, I've been so busy, but I now tend to do that at night. So I still keep that balance, but instead of starting my day with it, I'd rather just wind down and relax and then have my Bible verse before I go to bed. Nice. Uh, Pamela is a very, uh, you know, what do you call this? Um, a God-fearing person. Yes. Thank you so much. Next. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this one. What makes you blush? Um, I would say the kind comments. Honestly, because I take each comment with, with such appreciation. The fact that somebody would go out of their way and dedicate a few seconds to, you know, writing me a message or giving me some inspirational words. I feel like that's when I tend to blush the most. <laughs> All right. Next. Uh, who do you make ha uh, happy? Um, I would say myself and my family overall. You know, it's the most important people in my life, so... Okay. Next. What was something you ate regularly as a child, but now cringe, cringe at the thought of eating? <laughs> so I actually used to eat <laughs> eggs with ketchup. I don't know if people mm. eat this, but I, I don't know why as a child, I just used to eat that and put so much ketchup on my eggs. For what reason? I don't know. I just know that now looking at it and thinking of it, I kind of tend to uh, just try to avoid it. I felt like I ate it so much, I got so uh, used to it. <laughs> um, if you were going to ask um, me that question, me, uh -huh. um, I used to eat, um, you know, uh, milk, powdered milk, and then together with rice, uh, I combined it. <laughs> oh, God. And I used to eat it uh, when I was young. You know, And, uh, another weird food combination uh, that I used to have was pickles with mm -hmm. peanut butter. It sounds so <laughs> weird, I know, but I don't know why as a child I like that combination. <laughs> okay, so that was our last question, Pamela, for our faster questions. And I hope that you enjoyed some of the questions. So. Of course, you know, I feel like this is always a good way for us queens to get more practice out there, you know, 
So again, thank you so much, Jay, for having me. And thank you so much to everybody tuning in. And I just wanted to quickly shout out uh, my New York mm -hmm. team. If you're watching this, thank you. Thank you so much. We're so close to our departure date into the finale night, which will actually be held at the Breathless Hotel in Cancun, Mexico. Mm -hmm. So, you know, everybody stay tuned for that because we will soon find out who will be the first Mexican Universal USA to compete in Mexican Universal. Wow. Okay. Anyway, um, aside from that, aside from promoting yourself here in Pageant Trend, um, I also I will also give you the floor to promote your social medias and as well as your platforms, um, or an, and other activities or activities you may have, or shows, something like that. Of All course. Right, so the most important one right now would be you know that upcoming pageants. Um, but again, you know, I would say everybody follow our social media at mxu.newyork or on my own personal one at Pamela Lee U. So you guys can be a part of the journey on my way to the crown. Nice one. Um, a question, uh, dear. Yes. Is there a Facebook page uh, for the Mexican Universal? Yes. Yeah, so Mexican Universal has their own official page, Mexican Universal USA, as well as uh, Mexican Universal New York. And I even have a personal public figure uh, page, which is at Pamela Lee UMX. All right. So there you have it, guys. Just visit all of those uh, social media accounts so, so that you can, uh, you can have an update uh, with uh, the happenings of uh, or the journey of Pamela Lee Urbina on her journey to Me Mexican Universal 2021. Okay, we're so, so close, Jay. We're so close. <laughs> yes, we're so close. And uh, we are looking forward for you to get that crown, dear. Thank we you. believe in you. Salamat po. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Um, we say it, um, you're welcome in Tagalog. Walang anuman. Huh? Walang anuman. Walang anuman. 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 Anumal. Walang anumal. Uh, Did I say it right? Kind of, I'll practice <laughs> no. on the jail. Walang <laughs> anuman. Give me some La patience and then I'll the get last, better with time. <laughs> the last letter would be N. 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 Letter N. Oh, yeah. Anuman. 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 Exactly. Walang oh. anuman. <laughs> Walang anuman. Wow, thank you so much. Better, yeah. better. See, just give us some patience, Jay. We'll work on it. <laughs> True. Okay, so thank you so much, Pamela. I really enjoyed talking to you, dear. And uh, we wish you all the best on your uh, Mexicana thank Universal you. journey. And uh, of course, don't forget to, forget to you, of course, uh, be humble always and sweet to others. Yes. And uh, give thanks to the Lord of uh, more blessings. God's timing is perfect. I will always say that. Exactly. So do you have any um, uh, words of encouragement to our followers and viewers? And aside from that, um, to the other candidates as well. Go so ahead. yes, of course, you know, just how we were speaking about this earlier was that, you know, it doesn't matter where you come from, doesn't matter of your color, your race, your culture you are more than capable of achieving anything that you, it is that you desire because the power is within you. And I really want to emphasize on kind of building that strong mentality because the mind muscle is so powering, you know? Once we get a good sense and a good grip of how powerful our mind is, that is like the tool necessary to guiding you through life. Nice one, dear. And lastly, of course, um... Before we end our live session, um, I um, I think you have a lot uh, you have a lot of person to give thanks to your journey or the person behind your journey. So it's now time to give thanks to them. Of course, I would first off like to say thank you so much to my family who is my backbone and has always been there from the beginning and up to this very moment, and as well as my Mexican Universal New York team. Marie, Kenny, Waskar, Jason, Aitana, all of you, I love you so, so much. And then as well as our other collaborators, uh, Dr. Placido, uh, Oro Arte de Oaxaca, Ray Cash Team, uh, I would say Rinaldi, Luis Lopez, uh, Go Swimwear, Gabby Perez, everybody, and I'm sorry if I left anybody out, it's just a long list, but to everybody that has 
formed part of this journey. And I, Jay, I don't know if you know this, but I actually named this journey as Angels on the Way, Angeles and wow. El Camino, because I feel like God has placed certain angels that have helped me and guided me to this very moment. I even have this little ring. I don't know if you can see it. It's wow. angel rings, and, and I have it with me always. Wow, that's so nice, dear. And uh, you have a uh, guardian angel on your journey. Yes. Okay, so last word for um um I just uh, I want to hear uh, you speaking in Spanish um uh-huh. talking to your fans and supporters uh in Spanish and as well as um your fans and supporters here in the Philippines message to them. Ah, uh, mambunja, y muchísimas gracias a todos ustedes por su apoyo. Desde el primer día ustedes siempre siempre me han estado apoyando y así que de todo de corazón se los agradezco muchísimo. Los quiero y los veo pronto. Nice one. What's the, what's again, uh, what's the Spanish? I love you. Te amo. Te amo, all right. Te amo, Or Pamela. Los quiero mucho. And... It's kind of another expression that we use. Los, what is, what's that? Los quiero mucho. Yeah, los quiero mucho. Lo, los quiero, quiero mucho. mucho. Sí. Quiero. Ah, Luz, good job, Luz, Luz quiero mucho. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, how about um, in Spanish, good luck or best of luck? Buena suerte. Buena suerte, yes. Pamela Lee Orbina, <laughs> on your journey. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Salamat <laughs> po. All right. Thank you, Pamela, for your time. It's already 10 o'clock here in the Philippines, 10 o'clock evening in the Philippines. And I guess it's uh, day. It's 9.13. <laughs> yeah, 9.13 a.m. there, right? Yes. Okay. So thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. So if you have further more questions about the journey of Miss Pamela Lee Orbina, don't forget to um, follow her on her Instagram account. So just yeah. search it. Pam- Pamela Lee Orbina. So you will yes. see the gorgeous and stunning face of thank Pamela. Thank you so Pamela. much. Thank you so much, Jay. And thank you again, Linel, for, you know, connecting us and having us share a little bit more about us and uh, myself as well. Uh, yes. Thank you so much again, Pamela. I'm wishing you the best of luck on your journey. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.